What am I supposed to do right now? I don't know. There's so many things that go through my mind. <laughs> uh, got a couple things. So it looks like just confirming for some completed stuff that we're looking around. Uh, so a couple of changes here. There are just a little couple of managerial things that are changing up, but that's okay. We keep it going. Um, so today we have some repairs. I'm gonna be doing some rental returns. What that means is that I'm gonna be doing clean oil adjustments on them, or if they need, they're gonna be getting some repads, stuff like that, just making sure all the kids can play them, and it, you know, easily. I'll show you a little bit of what I do throughout the day, um, which is, you know, I like mixing it up and for my hands. So I'm starting to develop like carpal tunnel on my hands. I just have to keep it different. So during the summer, it really kind of killed me when I was just doing a lot of flutes and like clarinets and a lot of smaller woodwind instruments and all that stuff. I started developing a little bit of carpal tunnel. So I'm trying to change it up a bit and, you know, take care of my health with that. Little echoinas. Kind of feels like Toph, you know, um, like when she like sucker punches or like she stomps onto the ground and she sees like white echoiness. It's like that, but like, I don't know, I have like this weirdness where I like picture stuff in my brain. I'm like the good doctor, you know? So that's that's how I get to, I don't know, kind of helps me with flute repair um, or any kind of repair in general because I can feel out where it is when I'm blowing. And I'm pretty sure other people can do that too. You know, I have like this weird synesthesia stuff happening with my brain. So I feel like there's like another thing about like the human body that, you know, we also intune ourselves with nature and how things are supposed to work. So. I don't know, it could be that, it could be myself. I don't know, I think like that. I'll be checking out on how this flute plays. So yeah. Okay. Alrighty guys, so what I did is, so I closed this guy, this right here. So that was not fitting, so now it fits. Like a little glove. So now let's check how that seals. So it's the trill key up here. These trill keys aren't sealing. Same with the thumb is not sealing. So let's go ahead and make those. Uh, just let me quickly clean up. I always forget the stuff. Give me a second. This is a flute stand that I made kind of simple and it works, you know, just a plank of wood, kind of made it out of a pallet. Um, made a little groove right there, I don't know if you can see, um, and that holds the end. So that's the reason why I kind of just keep this end, is so that I can just, and now it holds it, that groove is going to be holding that part in really nicely, and this part holds it to the edge so it's nice and secure. Doesn't move. And then I can feel Right here, I don't know if you can see. Lightly check the action. See that B flat? There's a little looseness right there. Mind you guys, I'm looking at the camera while I'm doing this, so I'm sorry if it goes a little, it looks a little weird and I look like I don't, but I'm just trying to see if I can do it while looking at the camera. <laughs> uh, trying to test my expertise right here. So yeah, we're gonna have to check the seal on that. Um, so what I do now is, when I see that, I will be, I'll put, turn on my, apparently is not hooked up. Let's find out. So this little box is connected um, into this light tube. Um, fix that. There, do we have light? There we go. Sweet. All right, so we have light. We have light. Okay, so um, this little wah, 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 a little light stick is going to be for putting inside here. Um, so what happens is that, I don't know if you can tell, but you can see if a leak happens under here. And it looks like definitely right here. Yeah. So that F right there is going to be leaking. So it looks like what we have here, what's going on is that, that the regulation for this B flat key right here is gonna be hitting in the back and side a little bit. It looks like the regulation was off. The way to check that is, you know, you can unscrew 
and check first pad before the B flat that pushes that B flat adjustment key. Um, gonna be wanting to take that off. Check. I always like checking the back, seeing where that hits, and I found where it hits, so I'm gonna pull that, and there we go. So now that key sits. We gotta figure out if this one is sitting too, which uh, looks like the same dealio is happening. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring this guy back down, level that pad up off, the B over and flat. There we go. Alrighty, now adjust that adjustment screw back into place. Now keep in mind, you do want to do this with the slightest touch, so there we go. We got that ceiling. This key is rough. So what I'm going to do is I am going to switch the bullet over here. Lay that flat. And then we're going to check inside. There's a bend right there happening, so all you have to do is just push that at the right angle and it shall really good though. See? I still haven't I, I still haven't gotten those adjustments yet for the trill keys, which I should do first. See, these are the little things I forget sometimes before I even play them, so I have to catch myself. Good thing. Sometimes you have to say it out loud. That's okay. As long as you remember. So you want to stick that over there. So I want to check the tension. Um, so I have a little pad feeler right here. So what it is, is just like a little really tiny. So this is 0 0.001 millimeter. So um, it's really, really, really thin um, and checks leaks. So you can feel, what I mean feel is like when you put the feeler gauge in between the pad and the tone hole, and you should feel an even tug around the entire tone hole to make sure that the, the pad is sealing um, and that you can have a full seal around it. That's how you get um, a good sounding instrument is that when everything seals, um, it sounds great. So let's see. I do have a little bit off to the right, tugging way more. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to heat this a little bit. I'm going to level up that pad. It only takes a little bit of heat. Um, so, so what I have here is going to be called the Music Medic Air Vortex. It's really great. It has a little do re mi on top of it. So it just goes 100, 200, 300 for the um, adjustments. You can adjust the um, velocity setting speed of the air when it comes out. So you can bring that down percentage wise um, for the airflow that comes out. You can adjust the temperatures. So in between, let's say if I want to go to like, I can't read that behind. Let's see, it looks like it's saying 500, but I'm pretty sure that's a two, 246 or something like that. Yep, 246. Wow, I can read backwards, sorry. Oh, a new talent I just found out. Um, and then there's this continuous button that turns on and off. So right now it goes back to 100, but it's cooling off the air while it does it. But I need that on and I want to set that to 100 and 50, 30, 50, 50, 150, um, just to heat it up a little bit in the back, just so I can get it um, leveled out. And so what I use for that, as that's going and heating up on the side, um, I'm gonna turn that air velocity down a bit, um, because I don't wanna be getting everything put up around it, you know what I mean? So just a little bit. Um, so what you're gonna see is me going at this, Right here and so it's at the front right here it's hitting a little bit too much and I can tell that it does need to be straightened a bit so that it can lay flat there we go that's it so now that we got that going back is good back is sealing I didn't heat up that back end because that's okay you only need a little heat to just heat up that little spot and there you go um let's check the first trill that's good oh 
I think I found the leak. So it's gonna be up here where it first starts. And that's not a good leak to have uh, by any means with any flute, because that's where the first note comes. <laughs> that's where all the air passes first. So that, this key right here, this first trill key, see opening? That is the first key before, before any note, um, before any air passes through any note. Um, it passes through that one. So if that's not sealing, well then the whole instrument will not sound so great. So let's go ahead and fix that up a bit. So I'm gonna be heating up this front part a little bit because it's hitting t it wasn't hitting much in the back. Um, so because it needs to be leveled out better a little bit. And voila, let's check that. Now I feel the thumb now. Everything is great. Okay, so those work. Um, the thumb key, oh, yep, definitely. The thumb key is gonna be needing some work. So what I'm gonna need to do is I'm gonna have to heat, um, there is a little part on here that's like sticking up and I don't I don't know if that's a shim that's all put under there, but I'm gonna see if I can try like seating that down with like a little bit of heat, getting that to seal a little better because it's, it's like a little, it was weird, a little hunk was created on it, a little, little wart sticking out which is very odd. I have not seen that in a, in a hump set here. So I'm just ironing out the pad right now. It takes a little time. I'll cut this out. Alrighty. So we got an estimate. So looks like we need to... They're not in a rush. So that's the great thing of when they're not in a rush. Because that gives us more time as repair techs to take a better look and make sure that everything plays better. Um, so heads up if you guys want to um, get an instrument back in good playing condition. It's always best just to give us a little bit more time so that we can check over everything. Um, that being said, there are some wait times that are going to be a little bit longer than some other people, but um, uh, this, our shop, we're pretty, we're pretty good and diligent about that. Um, getting approvals out and, you know, getting work started on them, so that's nice. Uh, so I'm just gonna check this out. What I really do quickly on stuff that comes in for estimates, I just quickly play them. So I got an Alto Sax Yamaha YAS 23. Um, let's see. I'm just playing another saxophone earlier. So right off the bat, it does need cleaning. There's a lot of cork grease, gunk, and all that stuff. But again, this is a customer's horn. So, um, if they do want a cleaning, it looks like, um, they, they just want things to be adjusted. So, nothing cleaning wise. Um, I will clean off the pads if they're sticking, so I have a solution for that, um, special for it. Um, so yeah, we'll see how it plays. <laughs> jumping so I can already tell that there's already a there's something with the top stack not sealing and yep and key is stuck so definitely so I'll just quick adjust and see if that's gonna be helpful in its way maybe just a little more there I mean, I can hold it a little bit. So, yeah, it's getting stuck a little bit. That's fine. Yeah, so definitely, this key is getting stuck. So that could be spring, that, um, spring seems okay, but yeah, definitely needs a clean. <laughs> so it looks like what they requested is going to be accurate to what they are going to need. Oh, sorry, let me get 
so it looks like their estimate is actually what they're going to need. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, send out this approval, this pending approval. Um, then they'll give them a call, see if they would like to get the service done. We'll get it on the list to go. All right. Alrighty guys, I'm back. So things are a little fast paced, so sorry. Um, it's a Saturday and we got a couple things to do. So just gotta keep moving on. Um, I did finish that flute earlier. My shoulder's hurting a little bit, so I'm just kinda working through that right now. Um, but anyway, um, yeah, I got a parts list order from a school, a local school. Um, so I'm just gathering up those, putting them in little baggies and then sending them off on their way so that the kids can have those parts on their instruments. Um, yeah, you know, the fun part about the job is getting to do this. So it's relaxing too, but <sighs> very stressful trying to find part numbers and count them all. Um, but yeah, I'll talk to you soon. Trumpet right now. Shout out. She's a great, great trumpet player. Let's see. I don't know if I can. What do you do, Red? I'm trying to I'm trying to make a video here. I'm on a time crunch, man. Oh, sorry, forgive him. <laughs> now he's just working on his stuff while I do mine. He's actually working on some cool stuff. Uh, so he's a composer, which is great. Be aware. Be cautious with those composers. You can never stop them. <laughs> He's, he's great. I love him. How long have we been together? Uh, too long. Go. Four this, and a half years. This is what I had to deal with. Um, so this one is a custom Z. It's a really nice, really, really nice. Oh. Really. Oh, uh, really. Almost lost that. <laughs> So you gotta, I gotta be careful. I'm actually gonna lock that screw back into place. Perfect. Then you gotta check the valves. So I can eliminate that. That is not the issue. See that part right there. All right, so usually what I do is I disassemble the whole instrument um, and I get it to just its several parts. So I get the valves in its separate place. I start deconstructing those, so I'll show you what those are in a minute, but I take apart all of this first. What I'll do is grab a claw because I really don't like getting the valves on a rough surface. Um, so I set out this little pad, I just put it over here, and I start disassembling these guys one by one, taking out the top stem, spring, and the guide. Um, those guys I don't put into the wash, um, those are going to be treated nicer. Um, they don't need to go through that intense cleaning. Um, sometimes they do, sometimes they don't, you know, it just depends on what you're working with. So everyone is, every horn is different. <laughs> Love that saying. Alrighty, so now that I have these apart, I'm just gonna place those guys aside and then we're gonna get to the wash. So we're gonna do a chem, we're gonna do a chem wash and a sonic wash. So I'll show you what those look like. Yeah. 
All right, guys, so I'm back. There, this is called the Sonic Wash. So this is from Omega, it's the Music Pro. Um, so it's pretty large. Um, so it can fit a trumpet, couple trumpets, um, and their parts. So I got the body right here, parts right there. Um, and so what it does is just basically um, vibrates all the dirt off. The chemical wash, what, it do, what that does, it starts breaking down grease and all that stuff. So there also is a decreasing part to that, um, which I use just soap and water from the sink kind of save some um, kind of chemical use on my fingers and everything. Um, and then I stick it into the chem wash. So the chem wash you can see over here is gonna be open a little bit. Sorry, I was cleaning over here. As you can tell, so there's a lot of dirt when you work with instruments. So this is the chem wash. Um, you start dipping them into here. So you put the body in there and then take that crate for that parts, the little valves and everything slides. So you put that and you just place that in there. So I'll show you how that works in a bit. Okay. So now that she's all rinsed and degreased, I'm gonna put her inside. So usually all I do is just grab her. There's a hook on this guy. And this guy. So all you need to do is just put them in there. And then push them around. Good. And see those? trumpets hangs out on the side and the parts hang out chill in the middle. I just want to cover that. See how these things hold them. All right, now that I've let that soak for about 20 minutes, as I finished up another one, we're gonna stick this guy in sonically. So this guy just gets put down into here. I think I showed it earlier actually, but make sure you get all the middle of the there we go. Now you just close this guy, pull him up. Oops. Close it, and we start. So we have four minutes on that. And we should get enough done. So we got these two done. Then we just have the 43B left. Say hi, Brandon. Hello. Oh. And then we'll get on two more repairs. See you in a bit. Hi guys. So I really never said why I'm doing these videos. And I gotta say, it took me a little take before this to kind of kind of get this right. Um, but that's the thing, that's the glorious thing. Why I'm actually doing this is because um, life's not perfect. It's, it, you know, stuff happens and it's okay. You don't have to be perfect you don't have to speak perfectly or anything it's just you know it's what you do and your character and it's you know loving people and loving what they do and i found <sighs> through a lot of just like looking and observing because i'm i have come to I'm, I'm finding out that i have some, uh adhd and possibly some other stuff um, still working out those kinks, but I am <laughs> very happy to say that I am doing something that I, I like, um, in light, in life, not like, love, let's be honest now, um, <laughs> and I'm doing it with my favorite person ever. He's chilling out right now, it's, it's been a hard day, not a hard day, but a long day, I mean. <laughs> Um, so I'm just kind of just chilling out, out, doing some editing kind of thing, and yes. So Brandon gives me, Brandon gives me, sh <laughs> Brandon gives me a lot of hate for this, but I don't care. I do have an ice cube in here, guys. I do have an ice cube. It's it's somewhere in there. It's just a square one. But I do put ice in my cereal just to keep the, the the milk cold, okay? I'm not crazy. I've heard other people do it. Brandon said Good Mythical Josh does it. So uh, I'm not crazy. Um, but yeah, the reason why I'm doing this is just to show like, I, you know, a person with like, just be yourself kind of thing. Like that's that's my big message. And like, I don't know. 
I enjoy what I love and I hope you guys enjoy what you love in life. And I, you know, if you guys take anything away from these experiences or stuff like that, then I hope, you know, you pass it forward to other people and show the love. So, hope you guys have a good night and well, there's, I'm going to plan on some more filming. I still don't know how this is all going to end up or anything. So it's just like all in the air. I don't know what's going on, but I'm going to try to see how I can like go about all this and yeah just a quick view uh this is our room uh this is our, my our little friend that we made um that's a really um that's a a magazine see this is what i'm talking this is what i'm talking about not being perfect guys so like it takes me a little while to process things and i kind of look everywhere so like sorry <laughs> this is from the help not from the help or anything, but this is a magazine that one of the uh, one of the actresses was holding in the movie, and I love the help. It's one of my favorite movies. I don't know why. It just really is. It teaches me a lesson about life, and I don't know, very uh, very eye opening kind of thing. So, um, I hope you guys love the content that comes forward, and I'm really excited. Um, and I don't know. I I just hope. I just wish to share everything that you know i experienced too uh in my life with you guys too and it's just recording it and putting it on putting it out there i don't know i've heard people enjoy it so wish me luck bye <laughs>